Hello everyone, this is Amnesia, and today I'm going to be casting a couple of games sent in by Tered Bandit, who told me that these are some of the best uh, Terran players in the game that he's facing in the replays that he sent me. So, spawning up here in the top right, we have our hero, the Blue Zerg, Tered Bandit. And down here in the bottom left, spawning in cross positions, is going to be Starbo's Born. And this is going to be a ZVT, obviously. Uh, all the replays that were sent in by Red Bandit were ZVTs. Uh, so it should be a pretty interesting matchup. It's a pretty fast-paced matchup, and the most classic, iconic matchup in StarCraft, in my opinion. Man, who doesn't... You know, when you think of Brood War, or when you think of StarCraft 1, at least for me, I definitely go back to the campaign where playing the redneck space marines and fighting against the evil alien zerg that are invading your planet so uh, this should be pretty fun to watch too seeing as these are uh, supposedly top level players here in Starbo so maybe we'll get some get to see some really high level high action type stuff going hatch first here from red bandit and Still just getting some SCVs here. Going to be an expansion first as well from Born. it looks like. <laughs> We're going to put that down in just a second. So... Uh, I guess as this game gets going underway here, I'm going to say that I'm casting a lot more games than I'm posting. Just because I only post the ones, like, uh, some of them from yesterday had some really bad sound issues and I had my mic set up properly. Because I got a new mic and then never uh, remembered to readjust the sound settings. So my microphone was really loud and it sounded really crappy. Uh, it still doesn't sound great, I realize, but it'll have to do for right now. And the other thing, in Starbo, I guess there's no follow unit command. I mean, I keep checking the bind for it but yeah can't center on the unit so makes uh makes really clean looking uh screen movements a little bit harder and we've got double barracks coming up on the way here to try to make up for going for that expand first spawning pool just about halfway finished macro hatch also about halfway finished and right now we have a worker lead for the Terran player actually. He's going to be finally able to get those orbital commands. If he chooses to use them for the SCV calldowns, then his uh, worker lead will get even higher. And we should see a yeah, bunker going down here. Or no, a supply depot, rather. Uh, there he is. He is in the base now, so he's able to scout and be able to see exactly what's going on. He's not going to be too worried about Zerglings just yet, anyway. Does see the spawning pool is finished though. So that is a possible threat here. Pretty quickly, only two Zerglings on the way right now. I want a third hatch coming down here in the bottom right base, is the natural of the bottom right spawn. And I've actually seen a lot of Zerg do this in uh, Starbo, is that they go for like a far away expansion. Which uh, I assume is to. Uh, hopefully, like, the de delay the scouting of it. Keep your opponent a little bit, like, on his feet, thinking that you're going to base while you get an economic lead. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. Give me just a second here. Alright. So, Born sending a little hit squad across the map here. Red Bandit did scout part of it. Uh, not the whole thing though, as more Marines are joining the fight right now. And he's going to be pushing in here pretty quick. All that there is all that there is to defend right now is a queen, but uh, that will be joined by 14 Zerg Zergnings here in uh, just a few seconds. Two just finished. And more and more are just going to start streaming in, spawning right there on top of the Marines. And the nice drones being pulled might trap these Marines in. And he does trap most of them. Oh, he's going to make a run for his life, but he's not going to make it. And more and more Marines just slowly dying. 
really great engagement for Red Bandit. Was able to ride that out to the very end, keeping his economic advantage big time there uh, until he was able to overwhelm and eliminate the force uh, really heavily. Looking at 500 resources, lost to 275, so really well handled there by our Zerg player. He's got Zergling speed about to finish, but the wall off is also completed at this time, so he's not going to be able to put any uh, counter pressure on with the Marines standing behind the wall like that. Sending a couple of Zerglings out to scouting positions. I really like this one here. Is that music really loud? I feel like it's really loud. Shouldn't be that loud. Alright. That sounds super loud. I'll have to check after the recording, but holy cow. Not sure where those scans were. Oh, one's here, I guess. Oh, was he scouting? He must have been scouting for thirds. But yeah, as I was saying, I really like the circling here. We're gonna see if anything runs over here to see this. He's also got a Zergling down here to watch for an expansion in this direction. Oh, and the Zerglings do manage to get in. I was not expecting that at all. SCV's pulled here to save some of these Marines. And the Zergling's going to run up into the main base. And this is just going to be so hard to deal with. Uh, he's going to pull SCVs to chase down these Zerglings. But now with the speed, the Zerglings are so fast. They're going to run down here into the mineral line. And back around, going to head back out to the natural. It looks like some of these SCVs over here being pulled back into action. And now the Zerglings are kind of trapped in there. Oh, looks like they... Nope. I thought they were going to pick up some SCVs there, but they are not. Overseer getting taken out as well. These Zerglings are going to try to get back out. Another couple of Zerglings breaking down the wall. The Zerglings inside going for the Marines that were protecting the wall. And it looks like Bourne will be able to push this back with minimal losses. Uh, other than the Marines that he lost at the beginning, they're a really nice adaptation on his part. Able to pull those SCVs and keep the SCVs chasing the Zerglings around the main base. It was a potentially disastrous situation that he handled beautifully. Plus, uh, what was that? Plus two, or no, that is. That's plus one weapons, just about to finish here for the Terran player, which will really help him in this upcoming Baneling bust. A more Zerglings poking at the front to see what they're up against. And these walls already are damaged, so the Banelings are going to do be able to break through there very quickly. The Marines, uh, a little bit spread out. Not as spread out as he'd like, I'm sure, for Banelings, though. Um, how many does he have? Uh, what is that? 17 Banelings? Uh, even more on the way, eight more on the way. So this is basically uh, a huge mainling bust. A couple of medics there, healing up the marines. Definitely going to need all the healing they can get. Might want to mix in a few more medics at this point even. Uh, centrifugal hooks uh, on the way as well. A couple of fire bats really going to be good against these banelings here. They're able to soak up a lot of damage and they also deal that AoE damage versus the zerglings. So this is a really good choice. I don't know uh, if Bourne has scouted this at all. I don't believe he has, but let's see. Oh, okay, so he did scout the Baneling Nest a while back, and I apparently wasn't paying attention. So he knows that there is a potential for a Baneling Bust. And a couple of uh, you know, Red Bandit just being really good about scouting for all these bases. He's got his fourth on the way now. And he's still keeping this one up. I'm not really... I assume this is just so it doesn't get scouted. Ooh, big push out here might be a mistake. Pumping up all his units really close together. These Banelings, not, the speed for them not quite finished yet. The Marines can micro away. There they go. Kiting around the fire bats. Really nice. Can use those to soak up damage, but he really needs to split them up right now. The medics have been separated from the Marines, and only one medic stands still. Zerglings running in to get this around here. One fire bat still remains, and he might be able to clean up the rest of the Zerglings. No, the fire bat gets taken down. The Marines doing quite a bit of damage, though, in that nice clump there. And will eventually get taken out, leaving three Zerglings to remain. More fire bats rushing out here. Not able to save the Marine in time. But really nice control from uh, Born there. Unfortunately, he is stuck on his two bases versus this upcoming four. So this might be a uh, little bit of a situation for him here. Pneumatized Carapace. Movement speed of Overlord's about to finish. Double evolution chamber on the way for the Zerg player. They're going to start getting those double upgrades. Catch up to his Terran counterpart, who is now working on plus one armor. So we will be at 1 1 when that finishes. Small force moving up here to the top left. Um, let's see. He does know about this base, so he's going to be able to 
Uh, hopefully deny this. It's, it's his line of thinking, but because of that Zergling place there, uh, Red Bandit does know about this, and he's going to go for a big surround here. Baneling's moving in in the back. Can he try to go for the flank? And ooh, the Baneling's getting wasted a little bit there. Uh, only taking out single Marines at a time, as well as splashing into a bunch of Firebats here, but it is enough to scare Born back a little bit. Nice surround coming in from Red Bandit. Really going to be able to attack this from all angles, and Born will not be leaving this fight. And only a couple more Zerglings down on this side. Re reinforcements from Born able to scare back uh, the Zerg on this side. And Born will actually uh, survive. There you go, scaring a couple overlords away here, pushing in through the middle of the map. And Red Bandit knows where his opponent is at all times, which is a huge advantage to have. Banelings rolling in from the top, Zerglings coming in from the right, and the Firebats trying to take up the damage. Marines splitting quite well. A big group of Marines going down to some Banelings here. But I think enough Marines remain to hold off the rest of these Zerglings. Two Banelings rolling back on out of there. Going to uh, explode on somebody else. Marines, though, stimming, trying to chase them down. We'll pick off two of the Banelings, but more Zerglings coming in for this round. Banelings trapping them on the other side, but he is able to stim and run around the Zerglings. The Banelings having a hard time chasing down these Marines. And the Marines are finally picked off by the rest of the Zerglings here. And Bourne just having trouble pushing out of his base. He's able to slowly push across the mid-map, but not quite able to do damage to those bases that he really wants to do. Siege Tanks now on the field, going to be able to do a lot of damage to both Zerglings and Banelings. More Firebats being queued up as well. They've been so essential to Bourne's micro and uh, his cost efficiency so far. We see uh, about 2,000, 2,500 more resources lost for the Zerg player, but he does have the economy to back it up, seeing almost a double uh, both uh, for almost double for minerals, well over triple there for uh, gas income. Command center finally going to be able to land as soon as these SCVs move out of the way. And there we go. Siege Tank does have siege mode research. He just needs to get in position here to hold this wall really well. Still sticking with Zergling Baneling so far. We got Hive Tech on the way. Plus one weapon or er, plus one melee attacks, plus one carapace also on the way. Planetary Fortress being uh, constructed here in the third base. Going for another one. Big Zergling surround with Banelings rolling in on the top. And huge connections there. Banelings rolling on past the shattered remains of the topmost force. And going to roll away when all that remains is Firebats. A few Marines here straggling around behind the Firebats. But great connections there by Red Bandit. And a few Firebats do get taken out to some Banelings there. I'm not really sure on the math how many Banelings it takes to kill a Firebat. But... I'm pretty sure that's not cost efficient. Uh, the Firebats do have 100 health, uh, one default armor plus the one armor they already have. Let's see the Banelings. They do 36 damage, yeah, so it takes, what, three, about well, three hits, I guess, maybe four to take out the Firebats. And plus the, the Firebats are so big that the splash damage doesn't actually encompass much there. Plus two, plus two on the way for our turn player here. We've also got uh, adrenal glands about to finish. We'll have some cracklings out on the field. And I think it's really cool to see this uh, just stick with it. Zergling Baneling for so long here. Marines Firebats making their way up past this Zergling, but it does look like Red Bandit saw it, even though his Zergling did not. A couple of Scourge up here. I suppose those are either for drops or assigned vessels that might make their way up there. Born catching the back end of the surround there. Coming in from both sides of the Red Bandit, sandwiching his opponent in. So good at getting the sandwiches. And the Banelings are doing tons of damage. And there goes the rest of the force. Born going to tap out with that big... Uh, uh, yeah, a little bit bitter there. Banelings uh, are a little bit hard for the Brood War players to adjust their builds to. But uh, really nice play there from Red Bandit. Definitely um, some really high level play there. Born not splitting up his units as well as he could have, but really great micro from both sides. Really fun to watch. 
And we'll be going on to the second replay here.